Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 8, Non-Infectious Disease and Disorders. This is video number 19 in our last little section that we're going to look at, uh, where we focus on some of the specific types of disorders and some of the technologies that have been developed in order to address some of these. In this video, we're going to look at hearing and hearing loss. So what we need to do is to explain a range of causes of disorders by investigating the structures and functions of the relevant organs. And in this first one, we're going to focus on hearing. So you need to be able to identify the major structures in the ear and explain their function, structure and function, two very important um, paired terms that uh, come up a lot in our biology studies. And you should also be able to discuss some of the causes associated with hearing loss. So what I want to do is just very quickly walk you through these key structures in the ear um, to identify their structure and their function. I've put the diagram that I will ultimately come back to in behind the slide here. So it'd be good if you, uh, as we're working through each of these structures, kind of get a sense of what's going on with each of these as we go along. Now, what we're talking about is the detection of sound waves. So our focus here is on sound. We know sound uh, travels via compression waves. That is, the particles will either squeeze together or stretch apart. And we've called that compression and rarefaction, where the um, particles are vibrating backwards and forwards. Remember, with any wave, you know, you don't have the whole of the particles um, whooshing up to one end and pulling back to the other, you have this transfer of energy from particle to particle, and each of those particles then oscillates. In a transverse wave, like when you're in the ocean, you bob up and down, even though the wave's coming towards the shore. But in contrast, in sound waves, we have these um, oscillations backwards and forwards in the same direction as uh, the direction of energy transfer. So the wave moves forward as it's moving forward out of my mouth into the uh, microphone here. And, uh, and that's also going to be um, transferring that energy into a different form of energy, similarly to the way that it happens in my ear and in yours. So we start with a pinner, so that you can tell the effects of the pinner by making your pinners bigger. That is, if you use your hands to cover your ears, you uh, do an even better job of being able to funnel sound into your ear canal. And that's what the pinner is about. It's trying to help concentrate those sound waves and direct them in towards the um, outer part of the ear and towards the eardrum. That eardrum or tympanic membrane um, is going to magnify those vibrations. So as we've got um, these vibrating particles going backwards and forwards, we want to try and magnify those a little bit more as they make the eardrum vibrate. Just in behind the eardrum, we have our middle ear. So this first section would be part of what we call the outer ear. And then we've got these little uh, ossicles, little tiny bones. Um, including the smallest bone in your body, um, which is the part of the middle ear. Now, the, the thing with the middle ear is there's a couple of things happening here, and they're not all to do with hearing. So, But these three little bones, the hammer, anvil, and stirrup, or the malleus, incus, and stapes, and this is the winner, the trivia competition of the smallest bone in your body, um, uh, three little bones in contact with each other, and as the eardrum vibrates, these little bones will vibrate as well. So the vibrations will be transferred from one um, bone to another, basically. And the stapes or the stirrup, which is named that way because it looks like a little stirrup that you might use in riding a horse, it's going to um, pump fluid through the cochlea. It, it's attached to a little structure called the oval window. And the oval window is therefore going to vibrate in sympathy with the um, tympanic membrane. So you're going to get all of this, um, all these vibrations basically transferring through from the eardrum through to the oval window. That's kind of the, the, the way that this whole thing works. Now the idea is we want to move fluid through the cochlea, and that's actually the key structure um, that we're looking for in terms of... Um, how sound is actually processed in the body. So up to this point, basically all we've been doing is just transferring vibrations from the external environment um, through into our middle ear and towards our inner ear. So now we're into the inner ear. The inner ear is this um, very important organ called the cochlea. It looks almost like a little snail shell. It has little sensory hairs um, 
attached to um, the organ of corti. So these are particular cells that are going to detect this fluid that's flowing through the cochlea, and they're going to send electrical signals through the auditory nerve to the brain where it's going to be processed. So that's the kind of um, pathway of this energy flow taking us from vibrational energy or sound energy, transferring that um, through the bones uh, into a, a fluid kinetic energy kind of uh, thing happening as the fluid's moving around the cochlea and then transforming that into uh, electrical energy as it moves through our nervous system. Now we did talk about the fact that the middle ear isn't just for hearing. There's two other structures here which we won't go into in a lot of detail but they are also part of the middle ear and they are the semicircular canals and the eustachian tube. And the eustachian tube is about pressure. You will have noticed that once upon a time when we used to fly in planes uh, before COVID. Uh, particularly in, in taking off and landing as you're flying, sometimes you do get those problems with the external and internal pressure and your ears can hurt or they can pop. Um, and that's what the eustachian tube's about. Um, and sometimes when you get an infection in your throat, you can kind of feel like you've got a bit of an earache as well. And that's again, maybe that infection moving through the eustachian tubes. The semicircular canals are more about balance. So if you do flipping, um, if you turn your body upside down, your body still knows that it's upside down um, because these semicircular canals will have fluid moving in them that'll give you information about your orientation. Of course, you can feel these things uh, if you spin around very quickly. You may stop spinning, but the fluid might still be moving a little bit and it makes you feel a little bit disoriented. And a lot of people have played those games where they've spun around an object and then tried to, you know, hit a golf ball or something like that or throw an object. And it's, um, it's always very amusing and it's basically related to this function of the semicircular canals in the middle ear. So here are all the structures again. Um, what, what might be really useful for you is to um, get a copy of a diagram like this. Plenty of them. I just pulled this one straight off the um, Creative Commons of the internet. Um, at least it was there. <laughs> Hopefully it was legally there. Um, and look at how our sound is moving and what transformations might be happening at each level um, in order for us to um, get this whole uh, transformation of sound energy, which is what's happening in the air around us, into some sort of um, sense. That is what happens when it's processed in the brain. So you can get this sense too of the um, outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner. But once we've had a look at all of these key structures, one of the things that's really important is we want to look at hearing loss. What happens as a result or what happens to cause different types of hearing loss. So it's important that we understand the general mechanics of hearing so we can try and figure out some of the places where hearing might be a problem. Probably the one I want to start with first is this conductive hearing loss because conductive hearing loss is one of these things that's basically about um, the, if you think about electricity moving through a wire, we talked about conductance, we talked about whether or not the wire is a conductor, which is allowing the passage of electrons or charged particles to flow through. So what we need for hearing is we need that whole um, sequence, if you like, to be uninterrupted. So we want to make sure that the sound waves can get to our eardrum, can make our eardrum vibrate, can make those little bones vibrate, and can pump fluid through our cochlea. So there can be very simple problems associated with conductive hearing loss just by having a buildup of wax. Um, that's the same as putting your hands over your ears. So instead of having the pinna, which is nice and wide and bringing all of that sound into your ear, if you have wax in your ears, it's almost like you've got your hands over your ears. So the sound starts to become muffled. It's not as clear. You may not even be able to hear very well at all. And so these sorts of problems associated with uh, maybe infections, buildup of earwax, sometimes um, eardrums perforate, people kind of clean them with stuff and poke too hard, uh, or really loud sounds near your ear can create problems with your eardrum. All of those sorts of things, a few other bits and pieces, fluid, abnormal bone growth. Um, these can all happen that can affect hearing, but they're not necessarily 
permanent problems. Often simple treatments, cleaning out the earwax, uh, often a syringe can be simple enough to, to clear out the earwax. If you've ever had that problem and gone to your doctor, it's a huge syringe that they use, um, but it's very effective at clearing all of that earwax out and uh, often your hearing improves uh, at that very moment. A second one for us to have a look at are auditory processing disorders. Okay, so this is when your brain can't process the sound. Auditory is sound, and it means that we, we're not able to um, understand speech or to work out where it's coming from. So there's a, there's a problem associated with interpretation here. What's actually happening in your brain to process that information? Another type is sensory neural hearing loss, and that occurs when the specific organ that's involved, the one that's really critical, which is our cochlea, um, and or the auditory nerve are damaged in some way. So that the while we're getting all of that conductivity, we're getting all of that energy flowing through and pumping fluid through the cochlea, something's happening at that point, and it's not being... Um, pass through into the brain. So there's that can be um, a quite significant problem and it um, is often a permanent problem, not easily corrected. And sometimes there can be combinations of these things, mixed hearing loss, conductivity, as well as sensory neural. So there can be some combinations of these that, that work together. The type of treatment for hearing loss is obviously going to depend very much on the type of hearing loss or at least the cause of hearing loss. And so the first thing that uh, you want to be able to do is to identify what the problem is in order to try and treat it. And we will have a look at treatments in one of the videos later on. Thanks for watching.